Good evening, everyone. I'm Vince Hefner, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Cherubal, thanking you for tuning in to our Wednesday night Bible study. Hope uh, everything is going well for you these past couple of weeks. I was on vacation, and John F. Arrow, our youth pastor, I believe did a Wednesday night Bible study for you. So we're glad to be back, rested, and uh, ready to share God's Word with you tonight. Now, I know most of us are thinking about uh, school starting back for our kids or for our grandkids. I know we waited on a decision yesterday on if the kids would go back, uh, when they would go back, how many could go back at a time, would it be virtual classes, just a lot of questions that are on a lot of people's minds. Uh, what we want with our kids and our grandchildren is for them to be educated, is to learn. So that's the important part of school, is to learn something. Well, tonight, I want to share with you from God's Word out of the third chapter of the Gospel of John about a man who needed to learn something. Uh, matter of fact, he thought he knew uh, a lot already, but after he spoke with Jesus, he found out what was the most important thing to learn and to know into his life. Now, the reason I'm looking at John chapter 3 tonight is because Sunday morning, I'm looking at another person that needed to know something. Now, the person we're talking about tonight is Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and if you're not familiar with that, that was a religious group back in the day of Jesus. They were kind of like a council, and there was about 70 of them, and they were very affluent people, men. And they were generally wealthy and educated and respected. And this was kind of like a council, and these people would meet, and they would discuss things that were supposed to have been things that pertained to God. When Jesus came and spoke about uh, the imminence of the return of the kingdom of God, it, it alarmed them because they felt nobody knew more about God than they did. But they watched Jesus and they observed Jesus and they knew that Jesus was from God. Now, there was one man, Nicodemus, and I don't know if he was elected or he decided to go on his own. The Bible says that he went and he spoke to Jesus at nighttime. Now, I'm not saying that he went because he was ashamed to go in the daytime. I don't know exactly why he went at nighttime. But the most important part of that is he went to learn something. So when we open up God's Word, when we talk to the Lord in prayer, it's important for our hearts to be open to learn what he has to say to us through our daily activities. Even as we go through this uh, corona uh, crisis that we're in, this pandemic, the issue is... What can we learn from this? What is God trying to teach us through this difficult, dark time? Let me read you the scripture. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not believe our witness. I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man, who sits in heaven. 
As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. For whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What a famous passage of Scripture. I would probably say John 3, 16 is the most recognizable verse in the Bible. That and probably the 23rd Psalm. Those two uh, passages of Scripture kind of comes to everybody's mind. Now back to the, the story at hand. Nicodemus was a religious man, and he was considered a leader, and he was considered educated. And he's talking with other men, these other Pharisees, and they're talking about Jesus. So they, whether it's a committee or a committee of one, Nicodemus goes to Jesus and he wants to ask him some questions. Now, here's the thing I want you to remember about our lives today. There's some things that we think we know. There's some things that he didn't know, Nicodemus didn't know. And there's some things that all of us need to know. Now, Nicodemus went to Jesus and he used two words that were the wrong words to say. He said, we know. Well, they knew certain things, but they didn't know all things. What they believed were that they were in charge and that Jesus needed to answer their questions to see if it kind of formed up to what they already know. So when he came to Jesus, he said, we know that you are from God. No one can do these things unless God sends him. Uh, so Nicodemus kind of had a, uh, a, already a pre-existing position that a lot of us have. Uh, when it comes to uh, faith, uh, especially during these times, you can about talk to anybody and somebody has a, an idea of what uh, God is doing or what God is not doing in our world today. They can say, we know. In actuality, you know, only God knows certain things. But Nicodemus came, and to me, that's very important. I think every time we open up the word, I think every time we pray, we have to come before the throne of grace, believing that God can show us something, believing God can teach us something, believing that God can change us from the inside out. Never take prayer or Bible study thinking that you know it all and you're kind of telling God what he needs to do. But Nicodemus, thank God for him. He came, even if it was at night, and he came to learn something. What Nicodemus failed to realize, which a lot of us fail to realize is this, is that Jesus knows what's in the heart of every human being. Let me read you this scripture. It's out of Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his doings. Jesus knows what's in the heart of every human being. We don't. Jesus begins about the idea of being born spiritually. Uh, and that's a hard concept for some people to understand. The idea of birth is the idea of having parents and the, something that's being born has the nature of what's giving birth to it. The, the child has the nature of the, both mom and both of the dad. When we are born again, we're supposed to have the nature of God within us, born within us. That doesn't mean that we're fully developed. That means that the spirit of God dwells in us and we are identified by God as one of his children. Jesus continued, he just didn't stop there, the idea of being born, but he talked about the Spirit of God, which to me is mysterious and fascinating and wonderful and any other adjective you want to throw in there. Sometimes we think we can conjure up God, that if we sing loud enough or if I preach loud enough or whatever it is, some kind of activity, we can kind of conjure up God. Jesus says the Spirit of God goes where it wants we don't know how it gets there, and we don't know where it goes when it leaves. I think there are certain things we can do to bring God in there with us, but we cannot conjure up the Lord. It is the Spirit of God that moves. 
Now, in our daily lives, I think it's up to us to be faithful in our thoughts, to make sure our thoughts are pure. Uh, when we have a bad thought or we see something that angers us, is that we go to the Bible and say, God, what do you tell me about anger? What do you tell me to do when I'm confused or discouraged or depressed or afraid? It's not that we use our own imagination. We use what God has given to us. The greatest resource we have other than the Spirit of God is the Word of God. And I want you to know that the Word of God and the Spirit of God will always work together. If you're getting a wrong vibe or you're getting the wrong answer, you need to make sure that both the Spirit of God and the Word of God is working together. They will never, ever work against themselves. And that's just something you need to remember, especially when you get frustrated or aggravated. I have found that when I'm frustrated about something, the best thing I can do is nothing. The best thing I can do is keep quiet to get along with God, to make sure that my spirit is right. Because if you come across a situation that's stressful or somebody is uh, bringing strife, if you adopt their spirit, you're never going to accomplish anything. Jesus did not adopt the spirit of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, hopefully, was going to adopt the spirit of Jesus. He talked about the spirit and how it moves, and I'm telling you, in your life, the most important thing you can do is when the spirit of God moves, be obedient to it. Listen to it. Do what the spirit of God directs you to do. Most of the time, we want the Spirit of God to do what we want to do. And sometimes that may not be bad, but that may not be what God wants. So there is a sense of uh, turning yourself over to the Spirit, of being submissive, to say, God, this is, may not what I want to do, but if you're leading me this way and the Scriptures are justifying it and the Spirit is endorsing that on me, I want to do that. And don't let the Spirit pass. That's something that Nicodemus and the Pharisees had forgotten. They had the law. They had studied it. They knew it very well. But they had forgotten about the Spirit of God touching their hearts and their lives. To me, one of the exciting parts of being from the Baptist faith is our hymn of invitation. Now, I know some churches do it differently, and I know this is probably maybe just a, a uh, evangelical movement, a part that, of our tradition, that at the end of the service, the end of the, 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 the music and the worship and the preaching, is what we call the hymn of invitation. The hymn of invitation is an opportunity for the people that's in the congregation to respond in a physical way, a visual way, to what God is laying on their hearts. And I have been in some churches where the altar was used on a regular basis, where people came down and their hearts were broken or they had a question and they would come to the altar and they would pray. And then I've been in churches where the carpet is perfect in front of the altar, perfect in the sense that it's never walked on, that people never go to it. I think it's very important if God is moving in your life to be able to respond at that time. Don't let the Spirit pass you by. Now, there were some things that Nicodemus thought he knew that he didn't. And Jesus pointed those things out to him. But there's something that we need to know. Jesus talked at the end, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That is out of the Old Testament. That was when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, and they complained, and they were disobedient. And God sent serpents into the camp, and they were being bitten, and some of the people were dying. And they went to Moses, and they said, we've complained. We, we know we've done wrong. We want you to pray for us to, to remove these, these serpents. And Moses went to God, and, and God didn't remove the serpents. What God said was, I want you to put a bronze serpent, and I want you to put it on a pole, and I want you to stick it up, and I want you to look up. What had affected the nation of Israel in the wilderness, <coughs> it affected them all. To way, in a way, I look at our world today, and, and I see this pandemic, and I look at our nation, and I look at how people are living in fear, some people living in contempt, whatever, but their lives are changed. The problem is really not the pandemic. I think the whole idea is the issue of sin in our lives. 
How are we going to respond? Are we going to trust in God? And are we going to look up to him? Dear friends, the whole world's been bitten. It's not just America, but the whole world. Mankind has to deal with sin of falling short. Now, I know there's some people that will say, well, the way that you remove that sin is doing good deeds. Not according to the scripture. Some people say, well, the way to, to do away with sin is to keep all the laws. Well, the Bible tells us that's impossible, that a man can't keep all the laws. The Bible tells us that the answer to our sin is found in one person. And that one person is Jesus Christ. That's what Nicodemus had to learn. He was educated. Um, he was respected. But what he needed is what all of us need. And that is to believe and to trust that Jesus can deal with our sin. That's why he came to the cross. That's why he lived a sinless life. That's why he died. And that's what allowed him to rose from the grave. That Jesus deals with our sin. Now, I hope you have a great rest of the week. And if you can tune in Sunday morning, we're looking at another person uh, that Jesus was talking to, a woman by the well. She was not religious. As a matter of fact, she was sort of immoral. But Jesus listened and he reached out and he spoke to her on a level that she could understand. As Jesus spoke to Nicodemus on a level he could understand, he spoke to that woman at the well on a level that she can understand. And I want to tell you, Jesus can speak on your level. He can come right to where you are and he can make it to where you can understand it or at least accept it by faith. That's not the question. The question is, are we going to be obedient in how we live our daily lives? And as Christians, are we going to have something that the lost people see and that the lost people won't? I've been told that lost people either want something for free or to learn something. Listen, lost people in this world want to see believers act like believers. And that's what churches need to do during this pandemic time. We need to pray for each other. We need to pull together. We need to work together. And we need to show lost people how saved people act not just to the world, but to one another. Now, this is Vince Hefner, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Cherryville. So grateful that you tuned in. Pray that this message, this Bible study was a blessing to you. And we hope that you can tune in Sunday morning. If you're local, you can turn into a radio station. If not, you can pick us up on live stream.